facts or some people I want to say that it's an objective truth, moral truth that people would disagree with rape and child abuse and that sort of thing. But um, in terms of what people could argue against that is that um, from a biological point of view is could the people that sort of carry out those actions say almost be um, I don't know how to word it, rejects of, of like the animal kingdom, so like a mongrel, um, would they carry those out because they don't <coughs> actually have, want to follow um, a sort of biological concepts around, you know, do you know what, you know what I mean? In terms of, yes, I think so. Um, so could, could they sort of um, argue that people that carry out such uh, actions that we see as objective moral truths um, or against that, um, could um, could they be rejected in the animal kingdom? Could they say that? It's fine. Sorry, not rejected. Well, if I understand your question, it seems to me that you're enunciating precisely the point of view that Michael Roos explained, namely that the moral values that Homo sapiens have adopted are the result of evolutionary and social pressures that are useful for the survival of our herd. And those who are antisocial or pathological get rejected or, or, or uh, outside of society, and so they, their views don't win out. And as I say, if God does not exist in premise one, it seems to me that's absolutely right. That's what moral values and duties are. They're just spin-offs of the biological and social evolutionary process. But, as I said in my talk, that's not an objection against premise two, that objective moral values and duties exist. Um, because if moral values and duties are, are uh, gradually discovered, rather than gradually invented, then the fact that what we believe is the product of socio-biological pressures has nothing to do at all with their objective reality. To think so would be to commit what philosophers call the genetic fallacy, which is trying to invalidate a position by showing how someone came to believe it. So for example, saying, well, your belief in democratic government is no good or false because the only reason you believe that is because you were raised in England or in a democratic society. That commits the genetic fallacy. Regardless of how you came to hold the belief that you hold, it says nothing against the truth or falsity of that. And so this line of reasoning which says, well, what we believe is just the result of sociobiological pressures and the outcast doesn't survive and so forth, that commits the genetic fallacy if that is meant to be an objection to premise two. Thank you.